Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon from Jakarta, Indonesia. It's good to see you again and to welcome you to our series of regional webinars on uh, current topics relevant to the ASEAN accountancy uh, profession. My name is Oki Pratama, Executive Director of the ASEAN Federation of Accountants, or AFA, and I will, will be your host for uh, today. So uh, our webinar today is uh, organized in partnership with our uh, primary member, the Kampuchea Institute of Certified Public Accountants, or GIGPA, our associate member, the Association of Accounting Technicians, or AT, and also uh, our fellow regional organizations, uh, the Confederation of ASEAN and Pacific Accountants, or CAPA. It is uh, certainly an honor for AFA to partner with these three organizations um, to speak about a subject that is uh, very much a common interest for us. So today we will be looking into a topic that has attracted growing interest from stakeholders in ASEAN jurisdictions. I mean, I personally have been getting more questions on this from many of our partners, especially in the last, um, I would say six months. And I could not think of a better lineup to guide us with their impressive collective expertise and experience in this space and to answer all of your questions, of course. So it is indeed a uh, privilege for us to have the opportunity today to hear a first hand from them. So please use this opportunity to ask as many questions that you may have on ATs and of course, everything around the qualification and program. But before we start, ladies and gentlemen, to ensure the effectiveness of our webinar today, uh, please allow me to uh, highlight the following housekeeping matters as you can see on your screen uh, right now. So for our presenters, panelists, audience, please kindly keep your microphone on, a microphone on mute unless you are invited to speak. To our audience, we'll be more, happy than, uh, more, more than happy to hear from you. So please do not hesitate to ask any questions or share your views via uh, our Zoom chat function throughout the entire uh, session. You don't have to wait until the panel discussion or QA session to ask your questions. Um, we would, lift, uh, we would love to hear your feedback, of course. So a link to a brief post-event survey will be provided towards the end of the webinar. So your response is very much appreciated. And last but not least, please note that this webinar is being recorded. So your participation today represents uh, your consent for the organizer to use the recording for our documentation and communication purposes. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, so the title of our webinar today, uh, Know Your ATs, the role of ATs in supporting the ASEAN accountancy profession is a reflection of the increasing attention given by our stakeholders towards the ATs potential uh, role in answering some of the pressing needs in the region. Uh, the profession may see this as an avenue to include a potentially new group of members perhaps with aspiration to be qualified and equipped with the right skill set to support our businesses. Uh, for many uh, potential and aspiring accountants, the qualification and program can be an encouraging option, which will uh, still allow them to pursue the full CA or CPA's qualification should they aspire to do so. For the uh, business and economic ecosystem, I would imagine that having more qualified professionals would further improve the quality and accountability of our reporting. And as highlighted by uh, IFAC recognition of ATs as part of the global accountancy profession, uh, working across all sectors in financial management roles, public uh, and private, and financial markets and economies is an important step towards realizing all of those potential values and opportunities that ATs can bring. So uh, to begin with uh, our webinar, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite the leadership of AFA and our partners to deliver their brief addresses. Let us begin by welcoming AFA President, Mr. Boravit Chantanakul. Uh, Sawadika President Boravit, welcome to our webinar. I will look forward to hearing your welcoming address, sir. Thank you. Our partners, Mr. Kundalis, President of Chippa, Ms. Hitina Eun, President of AAT, Mr. Bai Anbat, Chief Executive of CAPA. Our presenters and panelists, Mr. Bush Vidvian, Head of Accountancy Education of IFEC. Mr. Lop Under, Head, Head of Business Development of AAT. Mr. Chiaton, Education Director of CHIPA. Mr. Henley, our Chief Executive, 
and director of National Institute of Accounting Technician. Leadership members and representatives of Alpha, Kipa, AT, and Kappa. Ladies and gentlemen, eating from Bangkok, Thailand. On behalf of Alpha, I am pleased to welcome you to our regional webinar, jointly organized with our primary member, Kipa, our associate member, AAD, and our fellow IFAC network partner, Kappa. Alpha as a regional organization recognizes the important law of ATs and as part of the global accountancy profession. ATS, ATs work a court of all sectors in financial management laws from private to public sector. To small, medium and last business entities. It is important for us to understand how ATs can support a growing economic region, such as ASEAN. I believe that they can contribute to the strengthening of the financial and economic ecosystem in ASEAN jurisdictions. Ladies and gentlemen, today's webinar is an excellent opportunity for us to build our awareness of the AT programs and qualifications. We recognize AAT's influential role and look forward to strengthening our relationship and collaboration in this space, Alpha also recognized Kipa, one of the few CAOs in our region who have made progress to the introduction of the accounting technician qualification for Cambodia. Kappa has been actively advocating AT under its PAO development initiative. Their words had been influential in quality, I think, to take leadership over the recent drive to recognize AT. A part of our beloved accountancy profession, earlier this year, I think publicly is called to action. Recognizing how it is and create value. Last but not least, we understand the importance of hearing from the like AT practitioners based in the region and the National Institute of Accounting Technician based in the Philippines. In one of the Latin organizations for ATs in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, today's webinar will hopefully kickstart more discussion on AT in our region. I would like to encourage you to engage our presenters and panelists and ask as many questions as possible to set, certify your curiosity. Allow me to conclude by thanking one again, our partners, presenters, panelists, and participants. I wish you to fruitful sharing and discussion. Thank you. Thank you, President Prawit. Uh, as you, you have alluded to in your address, hopefully today's webinar will start more discussion on this topic in our region. So thank you, sir. 
Uh, next, I would like to invite the president of the Kampuchea Institute of Accountants and Auditor of KIKPA to deliver his address. Uh, president uh, Kun Darit, the screen is yours. Thank you, Mr. Oki. First, my respect to uh, our president, um, Mr. Vorobit, uh, Jonathan uh, Nakul, President, my president, speakers, and all participants. A very good afternoon from uh, Phnom Penh, Cambodia. On behalf of uh, KIKPA Governing Council, I'm delighted to join with all of you today. And KIKPA is honored to partner with AFA and all other partners to co-organize this uh, exciting webinar. Know your ages and the role of accounting technicians in supporting ASEAN accountancy professions. Before I give uh, a bit of um, uh, detail on ADU program and give a bit of snapshot on, on where we are in terms of the country context. So Cambodia is one of the emerging uh, country with constant uh, economic growth um, and our ambitions to become upper middle income country by 2030 and high income country in uh, 2050. So Cambodia also has successfully adopted and implemented IFRS and IFRS for SME. Uh, and these successes come from a joint work done by uh, rural government of Cambodia and the accounting profession represented by uh, KIKPA for the last 20 years. And we have built a uh, necessary legal, professional infrastructure and qualified professional accountants. For those here together, we have built a number of accountants and auditors, uh, as CPAs, as you uh, recall, to support the growth of our economy. But due to significant growth of uh, our economy, especially financial sectors uh, and SMEs, the demand for professional accountants continue to grow. And we have never produced enough qualified um, accountants for the market, especially to ensure that accountants with, with technical knowledge to perform their job. So, on the demand side, uh, we have more than 60,000 active businesses and majority of those uh, number are SME. And on the supply side, in Cambodia, we have uh, more than 300 CPAs uh, and KIKPA, we have less than 1,000 members and it's our strategy to grow our member. But we have not been able to, uh, to grow our member as planned. So it is clear to us uh, back in 2019 that the demand and supply of the accountant and auditor does not match. And one of our long standing, we call it pain point, is that we have never produced sufficient uh, number of professional accountants uh, to grow our members and to meet our market expectations. So to address this pain point, KIKPA Governing Council uh, decided to have um, accounting technician programs as a better solution to, to the pain point. So our strategic purpose for the AT2 program was to promote and develop technical skills and competency for accounting technicians in Cambodia that fit with the national and international objective. With the purpose in mind, um, ADQ is expecting to of a huge benefit for our country, our country profession, and our economy. So for SME um, that we are talking about, the 60,000 uh, businesses uh, active, we need to have account technicians to support the growth uh, and stability of the SME, while majority of our qualified CPA will be working in practices um, and financial industry. So AT will play a key role uh, in promoting and supporting uh, SMEs for our country. In terms of the professionals, uh, AT is because of the entrance, we um, can admit students from uh, high schools or below that. Uh, so we encourage young uh, Cambodian uh, students joining accounting profession at their early age. So they have a lot of opportunities and they have a lot of energy, right? Uh, so we, we found that this AT is a strategic solution to add sufficient number to, to our market. 
In terms of accounting professions, AT also play a key role because it will become uh, uh, stronger as it's a, a complement uh, to our needs of the technical uh, accountant. From the investor side, they would have um, more confidence uh, for us uh, in terms of the uh, accounting record, financial statement. In Cambodia, as you know, we are complying with IFRS and IFRS for SME. So we need accounting technician who can uh, prepare and, and present the financial statement in accordance with those uh, uh, standards for our investors. For economy-wise, uh, AT does play a lot of role and bring a lot of benefit uh, uh, as we will have more uh, accountants. Uh, so it boosts uh, a lot on the uh, investors' confidence and bring a lot of um, uh, FDI to our countries. So uh, later on, our education director, Chia Thun, which is here, will present more about our program. But we have, for Cambodia, we have successfully introduced the ATQ program since 2019, but we officially launched in 2020. The program was funded by UNDP with technical support by ICAEW. All those uh, during the launch, as you know, uh, we had COVID-19. Um, but when we launched, uh, there are certain uh, uh, issues when um, COVID started, but to us as of the date, it proved that um, it is very successful for the program with a lot of support from uh, our employers in the country, our investors, uh, audit firm, regulator, and the public uh, uh, itself. So our students uh, have been admitted and uh, some of those have passed through uh, uh, many papers, and they have been well recognized and given a lot of opportunity to start their job uh, at businesses in, in the country. So our observation, uh, it's not a conclusion, but our observation is that producing at all level of professional accountant and auditor are key to our sustainable success of accounting profession and, and our uh, economy. Uh, for CVA, at a professional level, right? So they offer services uh, at professional level that are for firms like businesses, IPO business, and bank and financial institution. But 80s, the accounting technicians does play a certain role at technical level, which offer technical level services to SME and enterprise that to us is fit for purposes, right? And AT is good complement for, for accounting professions. So to us, we are very optimistic about ATQ program that will contribute positively and significantly to accounting profession and our economy. Before I conclude, I wish to thank AFA and all partners to organize this important webinar. And as I mentioned, Mr. Chiu Tun, our education director, will speak more on the Cambodia ATQ program and I wish you all a success um, with this webinar and I encourage more questions, more participation. And I'm looking forward to engage uh, with you more on the program. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, President Raret, for that brief but comprehensive address. And I'm sure Kik past journey so far in developing this AT qualification of yours hopefully can encourage um, uh, other PAOs in the region who are also looking into a, a similar possibility. So thank you for that address, President. Uh, next, uh, let us welcome uh, the President of the Association of the Accounting uh, Technicians, AAT uh, UK, uh, Ms. Christina Earls, to deliver uh, her address. Uh, good morning, uh, Christina, welcome. It's good to see you again after, uh, I believe it was Mumbai last year? It was, yes, thank you, OK. And hello, everyone. It's wonderful to be able to speak with you all today. And I'd like to give a huge thank you to AFA for organizing this event. It presents a great opportunity for us to come together, collaborate and build valuable relationships. AAT is the world's leading body for accounting technicians, professionals who support with financial tasks, bookkeeping, and the modern, broader role of the accountant. We're really passionate 
about increasing the recognition of accounting technician programmes across the world. And I hope that we can all share that passion and work together towards that recognition. When I attended the World Congress of Accountants in Mumbai, it was clear that accounting technicians were an important topic. Technicians can help the profession by showcasing their talent and attracting new talents into the profession to develop and harness their skills in an unrestricted environment. Diversity is an important part of this too. We want to see a world where people can thrive in the accounting sector, regardless of their background, with the opportunity to enter at any level and develop their skills to a standard where they can apply their trade anywhere in the world and be recognized for their value. This is especially important in such a vast and growing economy as Asia and the Pacific. In the UK, AAT has a mature and developed market, which my colleague Rob Older will discuss in more detail later in today's session, so we can learn more from those successes. That's because we want to continue replicating those achievements here. We have already taken programs to many parts of the world, including in Asia, with Malaysia, and Myanmar hosting programs. We want to see accounting bodies in these regions strengthening their programs and helping our overarching goal to drive up standards in the profession across the world, creating that recognized global standard for accounting while building the profession's reputation for high quality skills and unrivaled accessibility, all while working in modern, sustainable ways. I am particularly looking forward today to hearing more about accounting technician programs in the Philippines and Cambodia, as that growth happens before our eyes, leading the line in evolving the modern accountancy role to be as relevant as ever going forward. In my year as president, I have met many people from different sectors of our wonderful accounting profession, and it's been my pleasure to tell them about accounting technicians, what we do, and reinforce with them the value accounting technicians bring to our profession. Thank you so much for your time, everyone, and I hope you can really benefit from the information and learning in today's session. Thank you, Orki. Back to you. Yes, thank you, Christina, for your address. Uh, we're certainly uh, looking forward to working closer with you and the AT UK to develop the AT program in Asia and jurisdiction. So thank you, Christina. Last but not least, I would like to welcome our good friend, uh, uh, Chief Executive of the Confederation of Asian and Pacific Accountants, or CAPA, Mr. Uh, Brian Blood. Welcome, Brian. The screen is yours. Thank you, Oki, okay. uh, that lovely introduction. And Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Confederation of Asian and Pacific Accountants, or CARPA, it's my great pleasure to also extend a warm welcome to all of you joining us today for this insightful seminar. I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to the ASEAN Federation of Accountants for organizing this event and to the other support partners, AAT and KICPAA, Collaborations of this nature leverage relevant expertise to assist deliver a comprehensive and impactful event. CARPA is a regional organization comprising 30 professional accountancy organizations or PAOs across 22 jurisdictions that operate in or have an interest in the Asia Pacific region. Collectively, these PAOs represent a membership of over 2 million professional accountants across the world. We are pleased to work closely with ARFA 
to ensure the profession in the greater Asian region can speak with one voice. We do many things at CARPA, including providing a platform for the leadership of PAOs to develop relationships, share knowledge, and help each other develop. And we're pleased to include ARFA members in this. We also develop our own thought leadership aimed towards the development of PAOs. And in this respect, we've had a substantial focus on accounting technicians, and we're really pleased to have the opportunity to share this with ARFA members, which I will do shortly. We encourage PAO leadership and interested members to consider opportunities for developing this very important sector of the overall profession. I hope you find this webinar informative, inspiring and thought provoking, and I look forward to a productive and engaging session. Back to you, Orki. Yes, uh, thank you, Brian, for your address. I'm sure many of our audience today is looking forward to hearing about the uh, CAPAS leadership in this space. Okay, uh, now before we continue, I would like to uh, take a stop now and invite all of our presenters and panelists, including our presidents, of course, to kindly turn on your camera for a quick photo. So let us do a quick photo to our presenters, panelists, and presidents before we continue. Let me check. Do we have everyone? Monica, on your account, please. Okay, we're just checking. Okay, one more to go, let's wait. Okay, let's take a photo, one, two, three. Another one, one, two, three. Okay, uh, thank you, presenters, panelists, and our presidents. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, okay, let us begin our sharing today uh, with a presentation from the first from the International Federation of Accountants or IFEC. Obviously, IFEC's view and leadership in this space are certainly important, especially for PAOs that are looking into possibilities of perhaps expanding their membership and qualification to potentially uh, include PATs. So I would like to welcome uh, IFEX Head of Accountancy Education, Mr. Bruce Vivian. Good morning, Bruce. Thank you for making an effort to be with us today. Morning, Oki, and, and greetings to everyone on the call today. Uh, it's really a privilege to be a part of the session. Um, I wonder if we can move on to can actually move to the second the second slide in my deck, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start there. Um, just gonna give it a second for the slides to come up. Yes, please wait for a sec first. Fantastic. So <clears throat> what I want to talk about today is, is why RFAC believes accounting technicians are, are so critical to the broader uh, accountancy ecosystem. And if you read in our RFAC strategy, you'll find wording to this effect, uh, that financial markets and economies around the world are best served by resilient and adaptable professional accountancy organizations that have accountancy professionals at all levels and in all sectors. Uh, of course, it's the all levels part that I would like to focus on today, and particularly talking about this, the accounting technician level, which we believe is a, is a critical component of, of the, uh, the accountancy ecosystem. And I'm going to talk a bit about this through the, the lens of <clears throat> what we call at RFAC, our impact approach. So if we can move to the next slide, please. <clears throat> IFAC's impact approach has three components, uh, and the, 
the components are, are a strong and sustainable accountancy profession, a strong and, a strong and sustainable private and public sector organizations, and strong and sustainable financial markets and economies. And it's at these three levels that we reflect on our work at RFAC, but also on the role of the accountancy profession as it supports strong and sustainable private and public sector organizations who in turn support strong and sustainable financial markets and economies. And so recently, RFAC uh, uh, did some work uh, with a number of our, our uh, members uh, who, who focus on accounting technicians across the world, um, as well as other stakeholders like, like COP and PAF and others who contributed to develop just a, a short piece, which for us demonstrates our view on the role that accounting technicians can play in the global accountancy ecosystem. So you see a, a, a screenshot of that uh, on the slide here, um, the, the, the one page, the two page document. Um, in case you haven't been able to find this yet, uh, you can access that at rfac.org forward slash accounting technicians. But I wanna talk through uh, some different parts of this, of this document and, and just to try and explain why at RFAC we think accounting technicians are such a critical part of the global accountancy ecosystem. And again, that's gonna be through the lens of our impact approach. So those three points that you see on the left, we believe that ATs underpin a strong and sustainable accountancy profession. We believe that ATs support strong and sustainable private and public sector organizations. And we believe that ATs contribute to strong and sustainable financial markets and economies. So I'm gonna spend a couple of moments on each one of those points over the next three slides. If we can move to the next slide, please. So why, why do ATs underpin a strong and sustainable accountancy profession? Well, the, the, the most important one that's been mentioned already today is that it creates an accessible entry point. So we do face an ongoing challenge in the profession of, of struggling to attract sufficient, uh, sufficient talent uh, into professional accounting roles. And one of the challenges is when, when the, the, the entry requirements that, that many, of, many, many PAOs around the world place that, that you know, include things like university education, which may not be accessible to all. Uh, the accounting technician pathway creates an amazing an entry point for anybody coming out of school in many cases to be able to, to pursue a, a career in accountancy. We also note that, that people who choose this pathway tend to be very strong performers, both in the workplace, but also if they choose to proceed to a, a chartered accountant or, or CPA type qualification. Uh, and, and why is this? Well, we think it's because of the, the real practical experience and, 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 and very tangible expertise that, that technicians develop uh, through their training and, and on the job. They offer a competitive price point. And I want to caveat this. Uh, this is not about being competing with accountants, but it's actually allowing uh, chartered accountants. If you think of, of firms, for example, we think that there's a significant opportunity for more accounting firms to recruit technicians into their, their number, which will enable them to offer services at competitive price points. Uh, very often, the, the, your top-level qualification, of course, the, the, the rates that those individuals charge out can be very high, um, and that sometimes prices out uh, uh, SMEs or, or other organizations with, uh, with less financial strength. Um, and having ATs within the profession, particularly uh, contributing even within firms on, on audit work or advisory work, uh, under the supervision of, of, uh, of chartered or accountants or CPAs, um, provides, provides a, a mechanism to be able to offer those services at more competitive price points. And then of course, for PAOs, um, there's the opportunity to grow your membership base, to simply have more members, which helps to contribute to sustainable PAOs um, and, and to ensure that, uh, that you're able to provide for the needs of the market. We can move to the next slide, please. And this is now looking at our, at our second uh, uh, impact area. Um, if we can just move forward the slide, thank you. Thinking about strong and sustainable private and public sector. Oh, can we go back? There we go. Strong and sustainable private and public sector organizations. I'm just going to zoom in on, on two of these. Essentially, we see, and it's been mentioned already, AT is playing a critical ro role leading finance functions at SMEs, but also within larger organizations in more of a supporting function. Uh, and, and it's important to see both of these opportunities. Um, certainly technicians uh, can support the SME community, but they also have a role to play 
in larger organizations and can help to professionalize having a, having an AT designation helps to professionalize the entire finance function. To be clear, when we talk about this, we are referring to both private and public sector organizations. And at AFAC, we see a significant opportunity to leverage accounting technicians uh, in the public sector um, to, to support uh, better public financial management. I won't go into detail, but, but the, the, the last two blocks there, digitally enabled accounting, a real important function uh, uh, opportunity for technicians to play that key role in, in ensuring that organizations can use uh, accounting software and other, other technologies to uh, manage their finance function more efficiently. And as sustainability reporting emerges, one of the things that one of the great challenges of sustainability reporting is it's quite disaggregated uh, and 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 data that isn't homogeneous, um, which and, and can be unstructured. And technicians can play a really fantastic role in in collecting that data, making sense of it, bringing structure to it, and supplying that information for reporting purposes. And then, if we can move to the third slide, uh, which looks at this idea that ATs contribute to strong and sustainable financial markets. Firstly, on the quality and integrity side, uh, getting everyone who practices accounting, even if it's, even if it's at uh, uh, levels that, that perhaps are below your, your, your traditional chartered accountant roles, we want to have all those individuals still de delivering quality services and doing so with a foundation of integrity. So having technicians as part of the membership of, of a PAO, being part of the accounting profession, brings with it that foundation of quality and integrity. We see technicians supporting entrepreneurship uh, and, and, and meeting the, that, that gap that often exists for, for the entrepreneur community to get good um, uh, cost-effective financial support. Uh, sorry, fi financial services. The fight against corruption uh, requires many, many different role players, uh, and certainly technicians can be at the forefront of that. And then, and then, ready to close off. If you remember, I started off on on the the slide about the strong and sustainable accounting profession. I mentioned an accessible entry point into the profession. Um, when we think about SDG eight uh, uh, and the, the the goal there, looking at at providing decent work for all. The accounting technician uh, qualification is, is a fantastic way to provide an opportunity to those who, who may not otherwise have access to, to the accounting profession to become a part of it. And that contributes to, to growth in, in, uh, in employment in the country and obviously contributes into the broader growth of the economy. So if we can move on to the next slide. So just a couple of concluding thoughts. Um, three really important points that we make on, on um our value and opportunity document about technicians and, and about the, the designation itself. One is that we recognize that, that the technician qualification is, is a credible endpoint in itself. So for some, they, they see it as a pathway to, to a, another qualification, but it also represents a, a professional um, and credible uh, endpoint for a person's education journey uh, if they choose to step off at that point and, and then go into the workplace. Um, but it's also an effective pathway towards other accountancy designations. Secondly, the AT de designation needs a rigorous education program that develops and assesses competence. And this is essential for the credibility of the, of the designation. And thirdly, and this is, I've mentioned this a few times uh, in different contexts already, the designation should require its members to have a commitment to ethical standards and CPD. So we do not think it's enough to just provide training for people on accounting technician competencies. Rather, we want to see them being incorporated into the profession uh, and held accountable for their ethical conduct and their commitment to lifelong learning. Next slide, please. So at AFAC, we, we have replaced this call to action on, on all of our members and on PAOs across the world. And it's so great to hear of, of some of the PAOs that are already taking action, not because of us, but because of your own decisions um, in, in trying to grow the, the, the AT qualification in your countries. Uh, but we're calling on PAOs to provide a membership pathway for ATs, uh, to define the minimum professional competence for ATs in your country, to integrate those ATs under the ethical and public interest umbrella of the profession, um, to advocate for legislative recognition of ATs where that's required, and really importantly, to collaborate with employers and education providers on the market recognition and professional development 
of accounting technicians, which is a big challenge. It's one thing to, to be able to get the designation offered uh, by your organization and to get all members on board with that. It is a whole other story to, uh, to, to obtain that market recognition and to ensure that we get sufficient demand and supply going. So uh, I want to thank you all for the opportunity. And those are just some, some initial thoughts from, from us uh, and, and looking forward to hearing uh, the other presenters as they continue to, to share the work that they're doing uh, in support of technicians. Thanks, Orki. Yes, uh, thank you, Bruce, for your presentation and uh, for being uh, very effective with the timing as well. Really appreciate that. So it is important for our audience today to understand the values and opportunities that ATs can bring, as you have uh, alluded to in your presentation. And I think this would uh, answer some of the fundamental questions that I've been hearing from our constitu constituents in this region. So to the audience, if you have any follow-up questions on that, uh, please don't hesitate to put them in our uh, chat function. So thanks again, Bruce. So next, let us hear from the uh, perspective of, a, of an IFAC network partner, a regional organization. Kappa has been actively working in this space, I believe, since the 80s. Correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, later. So with recent developments in the last uh, five years in particular, so let us welcome once again, Mr. Brian Blood. We will uh, briefly share with us the, what uh, Kappa has done in this space and how uh, this could provide opportunities for many stakeholders, especially uh, our PAOs. So welcome once again, Brian, the next 15 minutes are yours. Thank you, Orki. And uh, thank you again for this opportunity uh, to present to you. I'll, uh, the first slide is just coming up as well. Thank you for that. And as this slide suggests, and this indeed was the title of our first key publication in this area in 2018, I'm here to assist and encourage your members and other professional accountancy organizations to explore opportunities for the profession in respect to accounting technicians or ATs, as I will refer to it. Your right, Oki Carpet has had a long interest in ATs and it dates back as far as 1987 when a technical assistance grant was provided by the Asian Development Bank to fund the development of training materials for accounting technicians using as its framework the then IFAC International Guideline IEG 7 on education and training requirements. I'm not sure that that uh, exists anymore. Uh, this was followed by CARPA publishing competency guidelines for, for ATs in 1998. Unfortunately, I can't enlighten you on what happened after these materials were released and any of the outcomes achieved. Because it was around 2016 that CARPA once again refocused on ATs. And the resulting publication issued in 2018 was written for PAOs throughout the Asia Pacific region and beyond. And the aim was to encourage these organizations to consider the importance of ATs in the accounting sector and whether and how they might create, support, partner, liaise with, or otherwise assist with developing and or strengthening an AT or an AT equivalent cohort within their country. The decision to commission this publication was informed in part by a 2016 CARPA survey of PAOs throughout the Asia Pacific, which collected information about the availability of AT or similar programs and qualifications within their jurisdictions. The key outcome was a picture of divergence and on occasion confusion. In many countries, the term accounting technician is not used at all, and different terminology may be used, such as bookkeeper, public finance accountant, accounting administrator. And on occasion, there may be no specific and separate terminology to describe those accountancy services, which elsewhere are, are seen as relating to this cohort. The definitions are important. And for the purpose of our work and throughout the publication, the term professional accountant is used to describe accountants who are members of a nationally recognized PAO 
having attained a professional accountancy qualification and designation. It would usually encompass a plethora of descriptors and designations, such as chartered accountant, chartered professional accountant, certified public accountant, certified professional accountant, chartered certified accountant, or chartered management accountant. And it's widely accepted in Asia Pacific to embrace all of these. In this regard, and for the purpose of, our, of all our publications, a distinction is made between professional accountants and ATs, notwithstanding that properly regulated ATs would be regarded themselves as professional. The first publication was designed to assist PAOs to increase, the, increase their understanding of the services the AT sector provides, the business and economic context within which the AT sector operates, the case for encouraging the AT sector to adopt core professional values and comply with core professional requirements, opportunities for PAOs and their members, and ways of developing and sustaining the AT sector. And in this regard, it explained the programs available and or what was happening in this area at that time in 11 countries. And you see them on screen. Now, these case studies identified that various organizational arrangements exist. For example, in Pakistan, the Philippines, Sri Lanka, and the UK, separate organizations exist. While the program in New Zealand is embedded within the national PAO, now CAANZ. And the case studies allowed us to identify the key characteristics associated with AT programs. In the time allowed, I will not discuss these. Suffice to say this, and all of the related, that all of the related, this and all of the related publications are on our website. And I also note Rob Aldo will talk in a moment about the key elements that go towards a successful AT program. The World Bank, in many of their reports on the observance of standards and codes, the ROSC reports for accounting and auditing issued for various countries have underlined the importance of a mid-tier accountant stream for both the corporate and public sectors. This is particularly applicable in developing and emerging economies where access to a sufficient volume of well-trained finance personnel can be challenging. Such accountants can be a vital component in the professionalization of the public sector and implementing public financial management reforms necessary to support economic development. This and other interest encouraged us to keep up the momentum. And in 2020, we updated our research and after identifying other countries with AT style programs or interest, we added a further 10 case studies. Now for full disclosure, we also noted that the interest in some countries had actually reduced, such as Canada, Hong Kong and Singapore. Perhaps AT programs are not for everyone. However, as you will see later, it could be because that the profession generally had failed to recognize the importance of this lower to mid tier of the profession. Perhaps if the global recognition had been in place, these countries may have continued their interest. The 10 additional case studies, if you could move to that, thank you. 10 additional case studies are shown here. Being based in Malaysia, CARPA remains interested to see what happens here. And some required legislation, I believe, is perhaps getting a little closer. <clears throat> in undertaking this 2020 update, we also identified a number of influencing factors that lead to decisions regarding if and how 
the AT sector develops in a particular context. In some jurisdictions, PAOs have either embarked on an AT journey or are fine tuning and recal recalibrating their existing AT program. The rationale behind these journeys is varied from addressing and catering to market needs to the professionalization of the segment, both in corporate and public sectors, to the more noble intent of supporting social mobility. Some PAOs noted that demand increased exponentially when legal and market recognition came into place. In contrast, in other jurisdictions, there is simply no immediate demand or need for a professionalized mid-tier sector of accountants. Further, it could be questioned as to whether there is a willingness to create such a supply. This may be the case where successful accountancy ecosystem is deemed to already exist within a specifically recognized AT cohort. Government policies and economic models can play a vital role in influencing the direction of development where governments are pushing for accountancy reforms, whether in the public or private sectors, and where the value of a mid-tier accountancy stream is considered important, the AT segment is supported and thrives better. Again, I will not talk to each of these matters. This can be found within the actual publication. In 2021, we continued raising awareness However, we remain concerned about if and how ATs are recognized and accepted as part of the overall accountancy profession. Our research projects have revealed a significant interest in ATs amongst CARPA members. Indeed, some members and affiliates are focused only on ATs, and these organizations in relatively recent years became members of IFAC. Such organizations can be seen to flourish in both developed and developing economies. CARPA is of the view that there are enormous opportunities for the accountancy profession in embracing ATs and providing clarity around the position, role and attributes of ATs. More importantly, there are enormous benefits to the market represented by organizations in the private and public sectors including the providers of accounting and auditing services. Accordingly, CARPA brought together a broad range of interested parties to discuss the situation which led to an initiative and a goal termed achieving AT recognition. And what is meant by recognition? Recognition is achieved once there is widespread understanding of what an AT is, and where ATs are positioned in the accountancy profession, accompanied with an unambiguous acknowledgement of the value of ATs. And the resulting report, accounting technicians, the time has arrived to recognize this vital part of the accountancy profession, discusses the issue, the case for recognition, a call to action and suggested next steps. There are many individuals who work in the field of accountancy with a large proportion having no qualification at all and therefore are not members of a PAO. The opportunity exists to strengthen the overall accountancy sector and in particular, reduce the number of unqualified accountants that operate in the sector. Here we aim to demonstrate on this slide that the potential number of ATs could far outweigh the number of professional accountants. IFAC research would also support this, indicating a possible three to one ratio. Achieving recognition of an AT will require a clear understanding of the difference between professional accountants and accounting technicians. The market needs to understand the difference. Importantly, professional accountants need to understand the difference acknowledging the value an AT provides as part of the accountancy profession, including working with and complementary to professional accountants. And here on this slide, we identify 
the key differences. Also in the publication, you'll find a qualification ladder. And this opens up opportunities to all and widens access to the profession, often supporting social mobility and helping to narrow the gender equality gap. The ladder here aims to depict the importance of flexible entry and exit points within education programs. The ladder shown here is illustrative only. Some AT programs establish other levels and specialisms, for example, foundational, intermediate and advanced. AT recognition may require a baseline to be established. However, international uniformity of programs is not necessarily the goal, just as it is not the goal with professional accountants. The profession recognizes the need for flexibility and matters such as mutual recognition are capable of dealing with difference. Change, such as introducing an AT program, requires the benefits to be properly articulated. We identified key categories of benefits with societal good being added to the traditional measures of cost, quality and quantity. Key stakeholders have also been identified and the benefits accruing to these stakeholders are explored in detail for you to read in our report. As mentioned throughout this presentation, please visit our website to access the detailed information on all of these matters as contained in our 2018, 2020 and 2022 reports. And feel free to contact me and or our secretariat based here in Malaysia. Thank you. And I'll be delighted to take your questions later. Back to you, Orki. Yes, thank you, Brian, for that excellent presentation. Um, it's certainly great to hear uh, your insights, uh, especially into what can influence a successful introduction of an AT program, as well as um, how distinct it is compared to the professional accountant program, yet both can potentially complement each other and benefit the largest stakeholders in society. So look forward to discussing this in further details later during our panel discussion. So thank you, Brian. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have heard from uh, Christina earlier. Now, now let us welcome AT's Head of Business Development, uh, Mr. Rob Alder, who I believe will share his UK experience and we could learn from it for the benefit of our ASEAN jurisdictions. So a very uh, good morning to you, Rob. Welcome to our webinar and thank you uh, once again for the opportunity to collaborate on this. Thank you very much, Orky. Good morning and good afternoon and good, ev uh, good, after good evening to everyone. Um, yeah, just like to extend my thanks actually to uh, Orky and AFA for organizing this uh, webinar. And also it's great to work alongside um, Kappa, Kikpa and IFAC on this very important area for the profession. Um, if I could just move on to slide two, really, because um, that kind of uh, outlines what I'd like to cover with you all today. Um, as previously mentioned, what, what I'd like to do is talk a bit more around the successes that AAT has had within the UK market, which is an example of a mature market, which it would be great if uh, we could see more of these um, levels of, of, of maturity across the world. Um, but but obviously what I, what I want to do there is not say, oh, um, you know, what AAT does is great or what the UK does is great, but it's, it's, it's picking out um, the elements of a successful program and what needs to be in place to make it work. Um, within that, I'll also just highlight some of the latest trends that we're seeing within the UK market, which are of relevance to, to other, other, other parts of the world. And then I'll kind of compare that with um, the AAT programs that, that we've been uh, working on within the ASEAN region, and also just highlighting where, where probably things haven't gone as well as we'd like, uh, and just to outline um, you know, kind of areas that we think um, need, need to be in place to make that improve. Um, and then pulling all that together, uh, I'm putting together the, the recipe for a successful AT program. So, um, yeah, if I go into the next slide, please. Uh, and again, that's just a nice little cover of what AAT does. Um, yeah, so we have a purpose. Um, as our, uh, AAT was set up um, to provide and open up access to finance careers for everyone. Again, this has been covered in, in some of the earlier presentations about um, access, 
but it's very important for us as a clear purpose within the profession to open up access to finance careers for everyone. Um, and within that to inspire and develop an inclusive community of accounting professionals equipped with the real world skills needed to help business meet the challenges of our fast changing world. So that's our mission and our purpose and everything that we do within the UK and obviously internationally as well. So if I go on to the next slide, I'll tell you a bit more about um, AAT and why the uh, programme has been successful. So AAT was um, formed by the other chartered accountancy bodies in the UK. And I think this is a very important point about a successful program. So it was in 1980, so quite a long time ago. So within the UK, there was a recognition <coughs> um, that there was need for uh, a professionalization and training for the finance and accounting people that were supporting accountants. So that was one of the that was one of the main drivers and a recognition that has, has just been covered in previous presentations. So there was a need to recognize and professionalize that part of the profession. So, so that happened you know, 40 years ago. And also the, the chartered bodies, what they decided, they came together and thought actually rather than all trying to do it, it was to set up a standalone body that would just be focused on accounting technicians with the remit to provide a recognized non-graduate entry into chartered accountancy. So those are the two aims that it had. And I think they're both very important because they show they allow a focus on accounting technicians, and it is different to accountants and senior level accountancy. So I think that there was a, uh, an awareness from the other bodies that that, that that was needed. And plus the opportunity to show that if people uh, accumulate the skills and experience um, within the accounting technician level, that they can carry on and extend that knowledge into the chartered accountancy profession, allowing greater social mobility, and allowing wider access into the profession. So as you can see there with the, the next circle up there, it's been very successful. We've got 75,000 current students studying accounting technician programs, mainly within the UK. Um, and we also have 50,000 designated members, qualified members that retain their membership with AAT, uh, pursue a CPD policy, um, so, so large numbers. And I think one of the points in Brian's slides as well about the profession is that within the profession there's more accounting technicians in the profession than accountants but they're not recognized they're not trained they're not professionalized but the the volume of people are out there um, and there's a real opportunity to to improve what, what they do now in the UK not every person working in these roles are um, are qualified there's still lots of unqualified people but anyone in the UK knows that if they want to get on, they want to get promoted, they want to be recognized, the AAT is the route to do that. So any job advert that goes out for an accounting technician role will ask for AAT as a requirement to do that job. And that's very powerful and very important. Um, and that drives demand across the, across, across the world. So we're the world's leaders, leading professional body for accounting technicians. Um, and just to, just to go on as well, a third of the students that qualify as an accounting technician will move on to, to study chartered accountancy um, with, with, the, with the, those UK bodies you mentioned, uh, as mentioned there. And as, as Bruce mentioned in his presentation, what we find and what we get feedback from is that a lot of those um, students do very well at chartered level because they don't not only have the skills that they've uh, accumulated by studying the AAT course, they have experience within the workplace, which they can apply at a higher level. It's popular across all sectors of the economy. So that's the public sector, across uh, accounting firms and across uh, industry. Importantly, a lot of AATs work for small and medium sized businesses. Those businesses don't require an audit. So actually all they need within their business is someone at the AAT level to run their finances. It's open to everyone. Our qualifications, again, very important. Um, so regardless of their age or their background experience, anyone can start an AAT course that opens up access to lots of people. And we find from experience that people um, who maybe didn't have um, a great academic record at school, they get into AAT, they get into a finance job, and they realize that actually this is what they do. And because it's not a theoretical course, it's a practical course, uh, they, they, they do very well. Uh, and just to say we're a registered charity, 
we're regulated um, and we're a regulating membership body as well. So all those components is what AAT does. So in the next slide, I just want to kind of pick out some of those points about um, why it's been successful. Um, and these are the kind of eight dimensions that I've identified um, for a successful AAT program. And I think the important thing is they all need to be in place to be successful. So the first one is the syllabus. Um, so this is what the qualification covers. And the important thing about the syllabus is it's relevant to the market, it's relevant to the profession. Um, and that means it's not just a theoretical piece that's um, taught at a university or a college. It's actually built, created with employers um, saying what they want. And again, an important point of that goes on to the next point, which is around assessments. The assessments that are prepared are um, practical in their nature. So it's the kind of things that people would be doing in the workplace. Again, this is, this is what employers want. They don't want people to know the theory, they want, to, they want the practical element. So our assessments are rigorous, but they're practical, and they, are, they cover the kinds of questions, the kinds of challenges that we're doing in the workplace. Makes it very relevant. Regulation is very important to us in two ways, really. One is that the quality of the qualification is regulated by Ofqual, so it makes sure that the quality is there. So employers and individuals know that it has the quality stamp. The fourth point I think is really important about who's paying for this program. Um, is it affordable? Is there funding there? Within the UK, within the 1990s in particular, there was a lot of funding available for vocational skills um, for non-graduate training and the AAT course um, attracted funding from the government which encourages um, people to take the course uh, and also importantly encourages training providers to offer the course because it's funded. Um, so I think that's a very important element. And I know, you know a lot of governments aren't necessarily funding this area of the economy, uh, but it, within the UK, there was, a, and there still is, a lot of funding available to attract uh, and support the vocational element of, of the economy. And accountancy fits within that framework. So that, that, that supported a lot of demand. And then coming on to the point about the training provision, because there was funding available, a lot of training providers started to offer AAT. So at every, in every town um, and city within the UK, there will be a further education college um, and they will offer AAT. So people coming out of school, people going to their local college, they will see AAT there. It also, um, because of the funding uh, and because it also is a pathway onto chartered accountancy, it um, attracts private training providers as well. Um, and they are very good because they work very closely with employers. They are pushing these uh, qualifications to employers. So it's got private and public sector training provision. And in the last few years, um, there's also been a big growth in online training. Um, so, so that makes it more accessible as well. So the training provision, which is the route to market is really critical. Uh, and if you've got the critical mass, uh, so AAT, for example, has over 500 training providers in the UK. If you've got that coverage, then you're going to get it out to more people. As been mentioned in other presentations, pathways to and out of uh, the qualification is critical. So when I say pathways, it's built within the education framework within a country. So, for example, in the UK, uh, at 16, you can leave school, go to your local college and study AAT. Um, also, um, you know, the pathways, there's, there's, there's stop and start places. So you can stop at level two and get a job, um, and that could be all you need. You could stop at level three, you could stop at level four, and then go on to do chartered accountancy. So there's clear pathways that I'll show you in a bit more detail in a moment. The brand and the marketing, I think, is also a very important point. Um, and again, this takes time, and it isn't just a case of spending a lot of money on it, but it's, it's, it's establishing a brand and what that brand stands for. So for example, in the, in the UK, we don't ever call ourselves Association of Accounting Technicians. It's AAT. Everyone knows what AAT is, most people anyway. Um, so AAT is our brand. We do invest in that brand. We do invest in marketing, um, but it takes time, but it's an important part of what you do. But isn't that you have to spend a lot of money initially launching it, 
it's over time establishing the brand uh, and that comes through, through through other sources as well as just uh, marketing and then finally membership i think is really important so it isn't just a pathway into the profession it's a membership it's a designation in its own right and as i mentioned earlier with lots of small and medium sized businesses all they need is an AAT qualified member. Um, and to, to retain that quality, they also need to you know, make sure those skills are up to date within membership and be licensed and be regulated by us. So membership and use of the letters MAAT are really important to, to, to you know, establish that as a, as a bigger brand as well. So all those things in place, but the bottom, the bottom point is the most important one as well, as well. So propping all that up is, is the importance of stakeholder consensus and support. And that's where the recognition comes from. So I mentioned the chartered accountancies earlier. So in the UK, they, they got very, very behind the AAT. They were supporting it to their members, to their employers. Um, and also government was pushing it as well. So you have two, two, two big important um, stakeholders pushing and supporting accounting technicians and that that makes such a difference so all of that together means that you have a program that is scalable sustainable is quality is relevant and agile um, and then so so what i'm what i mean by that is that it's, it's constantly growing it's constantly evolving um, and that's some of the points i just want to cover off now so that's the kind of framework that you want you want all those things in place and then there's just examples of within the UK how AAT is, is doing that. Um, if I can just go on to the next slide. Yes, so here, here we go. So um, again, this will be in your slides. Um, there's different pathways within the qualification. So we have a bookkeeping um, pathway, and then we have an accounting pathway leading on to level four, leading on to progression. But at each stage, there's a stop off point for employment or self-employment, because a lot of our members um, are qualified just to run their own small bookkeeping practices. Next slide, please. Apprenticeships, again, another example of government funding, which is really important. Um, in the UK, apprenticeships have been reinvented. They're high quality, aspirational. Students now have a choice of university or apprenticeships now when they leave school. Accountancy is part of that apprenticeship framework and the AAT qualification is an important part of that. Um, and what's happening is that the, the, the young people are coming out with not just the knowledge, but they're being taught skills and behaviours as well. So employers are getting a five star candidate. Employers love it. It's subsidised, it's funded and the quality of the candidate, something Bruce mentioned earlier, is really high, which means that employers want more of them, which starts growing and growing. Uh, more apprentices and more more um, accounting technicians that are recognized for being apprenticeships. Okay, next slide, please. Online learning, mentioned this earlier, <clears throat> big trend at the moment. 40% uh, of our learners study online, makes it very accessible, <clears throat> makes it affordable because you can do a pay-as-you-go type approach. Uh, lots of competition amongst the providers, so they're all doing marketing and spending money on advertising AAT, which is obviously great for us, but grows, grows the demand um, and makes it, more, it makes it more accessible. And from next year, students will be able to take their assessments at home. So you can see the whole training market, the, the availability of our training moves online, moves, moves more, more accessible. <clears throat> but one of the challenges we're finding with that type of model is that students can, can take longer or not progress in the same way as a classroom. It's just something to, to share with you. Okay, next slide, please. And then this is our latest qualification. Uh, again, this is an, all in the pack. Components of financial and management accountant, which I think is relevant to it everywhere. But this new qualification has technology, communication, ethics, and sustainability built within and across the qualification. Okay, so I'd just like to move on to the next part, which um, covers our kind of international experience. So if I can go on to the next slide, please. And again, thank you. So um, yeah, just, just very quickly, um, we've taken AAT into different parts of the world. Um, but only 5% of our total membership are based out of the UK. We were the first accounting technician body to become full members of IFAC, and we're associate members of AFA and CAPA. Um, but I think importantly, we've struggled to establish AAT in a lot of uh, international markets, and we've tried in many. So I'd just like to kind of, you know, summarize kind of the reasons for that. So if I can go on to the next slide, please. So within the ASEAN region, for example, 
Um, so we, um, about eight years ago, set up uh, a joint initiative with ISCA. Um, we were both very excited about it. We could see the, the potentials and opportunities there, um, but it failed. As Brian mentioned earlier, so it didn't, didn't, we weren't able to set up an accounting technician program there. Um, various reasons. <clears throat> and um, the ones that I picked out is that the delivery model wasn't there. We didn't have a clear route to market. There was no government funding we could attract. Um, and there was a perception that technology was going to replace accounting technicians, which you know is, is it was a it was a myth, but it was a, it was a challenge that we had to face. In Malaysia, um, we've been active in Malaysia for about ten years, but we've only got about three hundred students. They're largely government funded through Gas and Panaraji funding. Um, and I think one of the challenges we have in Malaysia is it's not recognised in the same way. Uh, it's not known. The brand isn't strong. There's lots of different competitions for other accounting technician bodies, and there's no clear routes into MIA and MICPA. In Myanmar, we've got about had over uh, 600 students in six years, um, largely through one very um, proactive training provider, uh, Mass Education. We have an MOU with MICPA, which is 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 good, um, but the the big, I mean, you know, we've got some pretty good numbers there, but they're still low low brand awareness. Uh, there's some challenges with language um, and we, we, we ourselves haven't invested too much in there uh, due to the, 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 current, the current, current climate. But I think the main thing is it's, 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 it's quite fragmented within Myanmar. Okay, if I go into the next slide. So just kind of pulling some of that all together. So the, the, the success, success in the UK is based very much on having all those elements in place and they don't all have to be there on day one. But, and it takes time, but you need to focus on all of them to establish a successful program. So in the international markets, what we see across the world, and has been echoed by uh, the things said earlier, is there's a, there's a huge demand, huge opportunity for the profession to address um, you know, a whole range of factors. Um, but I think the, the, the big issue is um, there's, there's lack of recognition, um, which results in a fragmented offering. So to summarize, the key ingredients for success that I think any accounting technician body needs is, first of all, most importantly, the advocacy of chartered bodies, their members and employers. So that recognition needs to be there. Secondly, um, some form of embedding the qualification within the government education and funding system. Thirdly, uh, the qualification to be relevant to the market and continually reviewed and improved. Fourthly, um, brand awareness. Um, so investment in the brand is, is, is critical. It says brand of accounting technicians or the local brand. Clear pathways into and out of the qualification um, and maintaining its relevance to the external market and the changing profession. Um, and finally, um, something to leave you with, a clear AT focus. So the successes we have seen in the UK is large because we are focused on accounting technicians and there's similar examples in Sri Lanka and Ireland where there's a clear AT focus. It doesn't mean that if, you, if the chartered body sets it up itself, it won't be successful, but you need a clear focus on that part of the market. Thank you very much for your time. I'm passing you back to Walkie now. Yes, uh, thank you Rob for your uh, insightful presentation. Uh, I particularly um, appreciate your notes towards the end on the key ingredients for success, which I believe our PAUs and maybe even relevant stakeholders who are in our, the audience today will find useful in their contemplation. So thank you for that, Rob. Okay, so last but not least, before our discussion, uh, I mean, Rob mentioned about the latest state of 80s in um, Singapore, Malaysia, and Myanmar in his presentation. But one jurisdiction in ASEAN who is making some important progress with their AT program is actually Cambodia, as what uh, President uh, Darit has mentioned in his address. So let us welcome and hear from Mr. Chia Tun, the Education Director of, of uh, KICPA. Yeah, you're still on mute, I think. Okay. Thank you, Okay. First of all, I would like to thank, uh, to pay my respectful to uh, President, uh, Director, Leaders, and all speakers. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my presentation today. Uh, before I start my presentation, I would like to thank Alpha for organizing uh, this important event. 
uh, give me opportunity to share the status of uh, ATQ, which is AT program in Cambodia that we implement and uh, the sum of the challenge uh, in Cambodia. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Mr. Chia Thun, the Education Director of KIPA. And in the speech of the Mr. Kondarat, the President of uh, KIPA, uh, state also the purpose of the uh, AT program. Uh, I can mention again that the purpose for the AT program in Cambodia is to promote and uh, develop the skill and competency of the technician accountant. Uh, which fit with the national and international objective and also to meet the need of the uh, SME employer. Uh, so before I start, I would like to introduce a little bit about the KIPA. KIPA is, uh, the full word is uh, Kampuchea Institute of uh, Certified Public Accountants and Auditors. We, we are the one independence in profession and create, uh, we established in 2003 by the accounting and auditing law of the Cambodia uh, with a vision to be a recognized and a trusted accountancy body in Cambodia. Uh, we have a mission to uh, uphold the public interest by regulating and educating the, uh, the professional accountant to a highest uh, professional standard and code of ethics and also to maintain uh, the confidence of the public uh, in this profession. Next slide, please. Uh, we have two categories of members, firm members and individual members. And uh, firm members starting from uh, student, associate member, affiliate member, and uh, active member, which, which uh, uh, active member as an accountant or active member as an auditor. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, to my topic uh, today, uh, I would like to introduce uh, a little bit regarding uh, uh, ATQ, uh, which in Cambodia we say ATQ, uh, Accounting Technician uh, Qualification. Uh, also, uh, uh, AT program uh, in our topic today. Uh, okay, next slide, please. Yes, uh, we have the app, the which is called Kipa app, which is the learning hub for student that the student can study anywhere with the. Uh, uh, tutorial video with the uh, uh, quiz, test, and mock exam, reading in this app. And also they can uh, access to the website also the same template. And uh, they can uh, read the accounting standard law and regulation also. So uh, when, when they take exam, they just come to uh, the KIPA that we arrange. So uh, the study, they, they can study themselves or study at the training organization. Next slide, please. Uh, regarding my presentation, as uh, you know that uh, the previous speaker mentioned the key success uh, of the AT already in, in other countries and especially uh, in UK also. So I think uh, the model is almost the same because of the uh, our program has been developed by uh, with the technical support from ICAW also. And it, it is actually the uh, AT in Cambodia is a competency-based examination. Uh, uh, it's a, it's a computer-based exam. A student can study at any tuition provider, but we say training organization. Now we have uh, eight training organization and uh, we are working with the uh, higher association uh, uh, education in Cambodia for apply to other many university uh, in Cambodia as soon as possible. And all the students have to come to take the exam with KIPA. So uh, we offer the 
learning material to all the training organization. We try to train to the lecturers and conduct the orientation to the student also. And uh, after that, because of the, uh, the, the compulsory of the learning material, so the student are uh, afford to take the exam with KIPA to get the uh, uh, accounting technician's uh, cert uh, qualification. And uh, our qualification, uh, it just, uh, we try to uh, uh, mention to, to uh, our student that it is the added value uh, certificate and also the trusted by employers. And also, you know, because of uh, this program right now, uh, many students in Cambodia, they are very happy to, to, uh, uh, to take exam because sometimes they are not affordable to pay for the uh, tuition fee at a, at a, a good school. So right now they study anywhere, they can study themselves and then they can take exam with uh, uh, a very low cost uh, examination in Cambodia with KIPA that uh, we try to promote a uh, AT program in Cambodia. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, the development we start uh, develop in 2019 uh, using the industrial based curriculum uh, with the supporting technical support by ICW and uh, also funded by uh, UNDP since 2019. And also um, uh, the industrial based curriculum is mean we did the survey with the university, with the employers to know uh, the need and to match the need of the uh, uh, employers. So uh, after that, we develop the syllabus and uh, we try to conduct the, uh, uh, we try to compose the book uh, with the uh, EWI. And also uh, the examiner trained by uh, ICAW and uh, most of our examiner are from the firm that they can uh, show their, their need, their perspective of the employer need. So we hope that uh, all the students that pass uh, each subject or the AT program will need the need of the employer because of uh, even the question, even the you know examination and the curriculum, we try to meet the need of the employers. Uh, the model that we run with the with the university, some university they embed our program into the bachelor or associate degree. And then the, the student that they can take exam with the uh, university to get the bachelor or associate degree. At the same time, they can apply to take ex exam for another added value uh, certificate. It is AT program with KIPA. And some, we have MOU with uh, some of the training organization uh, to run as, as a standalone program. So it will take around one year and a half or yeah, around one year and a half to pass the exam with the, the, the institute, with the training organization and also with the KIPA. Uh, there are eight subjects for uh, AT program in Cambodia and uh, two subjects, we offer them uh, one uh, skill recognized Example, uh, if they pass for subject, uh, the first subject is a uh, bookkeeping and uh, uh, IT skill, then they will be recognized as a bookkeeper from KIPA. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, this program uh, designed, you know, to offer the benefit for young Cambodian people that uh, give them the opportunity in the career and also to diversify from only based on the garment factory or the, you know, labor. Uh, uh, because of Cambodia, we, we have, uh, uh, we based on the garment factory. So uh, starting from a project of the UNDP that they fund because of uh, UNDP fund many years uh, for, uh, for garment factory. And right now, uh, uh, UNDP uh, foresee that uh, uh, in the future, uh, garment factory will, will not be sustained all the ways in Cambodia. So uh, 
Cambodia had to diversify to another skill. And uh, accounting uh, AT program is uh, needed for SME also. And this is the reason that uh, we can collaborate and uh, request a fund from uh, UNDP and also can work with uh, ICAW for uh, technical support. And also, you know, uh, with AT uh, starting from, or we can say scratch AT, uh, accounting will become a stronger across Cambodia. Uh, I can say uh, right now, uh, as, as the development, we, we start in 2019, but uh, we launched in 2020. And uh, after that, it, the COVID-19. So uh, we start the examination in this year, in February this year. And the student, we work with the student in 2022. So uh, we got the register from the student 600, uh, 634 students. And uh, right now, some of the some of the registered students they take exam already, and the passing rate uh, almost a forty percent. Yeah, we. Uh, I I think it's a good point uh, for Cambodia that uh, at a starting point we got the support from the all all the SME and the university together that we can work collaboratively together yeah so i hope in the next year we will have many uh, students that will uh, take exam uh, for the at program in cambodia and we will try for another uh, passing rate uh, to increase another passing rate yeah so uh, another benefit is uh, uh, as you know that uh, employer uh, all all around the world uh, in this sector uh, they need the uh, AT uh, accounting technician rather than the professional accountant. So uh, uh, Cambodia will, uh, you know, Cambodia will be the, uh, uh, we will, all the Cambodian, I, I hope that all the Cambodian uh, will be trained in the skill and needed for the economy. And also this one is also a good indicator for investor that uh, they will come to invest in Cambodia and also uh, to show us an evidence for uh, the, the strong of the financial capacity and uh, investor confidence for Cambodia also. Next slide, please. Uh, regarding to the language, as AT, uh, ATT mentioned, uh, for the AT program in Cambodia, we have two language. Learning material are producing you know, le learning material, we, we, we have two language, Khmer and uh, English language. During the examination session, students can switch language simultaneously, reading in Khmer or in English language simultaneously. Uh, it's not only just choose one language. It means you are watching uh, Khmer language and you don't understand, you can switch to English language and then you can switch uh, it back simultaneously. Next slide, please. Yes, this is uh, the syllabus that uh, after we did this way uh, with the employers and the university, and uh, we write, uh, come up with the, this uh, syllabus, eight subject. Uh, normally, it will take around two years for uh, university because they embed uh, into the bachelor degree or associate degree. But it's the choice of the student that they can, if they, they can study themselves. So it may be sort of, it may be one year or one year and a half. It's based on their uh, willing to take the exam. And we also have the uh, internship program that we try to coordinate with the uh, university to offer the internship program for the student to, to intern with the accounting or, or auditing uh, uh, firm in Cambodia. Next slide, please. Uh, regarding to this uh, part one, uh, I can say uh, if the student pass two subjects of the part one, they will be the bookkeeper. 
and part two they will be the cost accounting and part three uh, they will be the uh, what we call the re, uh, reporting accountant and part four they will be the tax legal support officer so uh, each part we we try to recognize them in each part because of uh, we want we want them to uh, have a good career, have a good job, starting from year one, semester one or semester two. And then uh, they can afford themselves, you know, rather than uh, uh, the support from their family. So uh, that is why we try to promote uh, this field to the student that if you want to afford for your living condition after high school and uh, you should take exam with uh, two subject only and uh, Kipa will try all the best to uh, offer you opportunity for internship or the job that uh, uh, you know all the accounting and auditing firm is really needed for this kind of job next slide please Uh, what I want to see uh, for the ATQ program in Cambodia in the future, we want to harmonize the accounting education nationwide. Uh, we want to offer the learn all the learning material that we have to all the university uh, to, to have a, a standard of uh, studying together. And also uh, we we want to train the Cambodian, especially the young professional to be well equipped with readiness and skills in accounting. And uh, we hope that uh, with uh, the growth of the uh, AT program, uh, Cambodia economy will moving forward. Next slide, please. Yeah, this is a challenge uh, in, in uh, implementing the AT in Cambodia. Next slide, please. Uh, I, I hope that uh, most of the challenge, not only in Cambodia, but uh, all the country uh, start uh, with the AT program. The first is uh, awareness of the AT program because of, you know, uh, one, of, one of my friends in Singapore asked me, uh, uh, my country have accountant, many accountants, I can say yes, uh, but have a certified accountant. Uh, I say not, not uh, really uh, many of them uh, can got a cert, uh, certify. Uh, also another, uh, yeah, because of the awareness of the student that they don't know the career perspective uh, in this uh, accounting uh, field. And uh, regarding another one challenge is uh, teaching and learning culture. I think uh, it is very important. Normally in Cambodia, or other country, the, the student that they study at the university, the question in the examination around 10 question or 15 question, come up with the uh, AT examination with 50 question. And the need of employer, why uh, we create this program like that? Because of the need of employer is not understanding is a uh, skill based is mean uh, they need the the staff with understanding and productivity high productivity so the productivity we have to link to the professional uh, the professional mean here is based on the examinations uh, uh, for judgment so 50 question sometimes 50 question for 2 hours so the culture in cambodia only 15 question in one hour and a half or two hour only. So uh, even the first rank in the class, but all, also they fail with the examination because they are not familiar with the new contact. So 
I try to conduct many orientation to the student and we conduct all the TOT with the teacher also yeah, to change their teaching style and to change their learning style. Uh, after that, it's the success is not AT program, it's the success of the student in Cambodia, not only AT program, but they can take another examination uh, with the other foreign uh, qualifications very easily. So this is uh, the challenge that uh, we try, uh, we found it and uh, we try to, to solve uh, from the last year, 2022 until now. And uh, I think uh, in terms of the uh, ASEAN, uh, we have the ASEAN CPA has been integrated already. Uh, if we want to promote the value of the AT program, I think uh, all the countries should start thinking about uh, uh, about the how we qualify or recognize each other like uh, as in CPA. So this is uh, uh, what we I think uh, promoting a value of the AT program is not only Cambodia but it's starting with uh, AFA and all other country to recognize each other. I know the, the context is uh, different that uh, AT must have, uh, we have a local AT in, in, uh, in each country, but uh, example, based on the, the development support from ICW, the same page, then we can talk about the uh, recognize each other, example, the way. So, uh, uh, for the AT program in Cambodia, I also would like to mention that uh, the pathway to CPA level, uh, it would be uh, exam for foundation level of the CPA level one. Uh, in Cambodia, uh, KIPA also uh, the one that uh, start develop the uh, CPA level. Uh, we have three level and uh, for and we transfer to the uh, uh, ministry and uh, for the AT program we the one that uh, run ourselves and uh, for the pathway is an uh, assumption for one uh, foundation level and we will try to have a, a discussion for an exemption not only with the CPA but the, the other uh, international accountancy body for exemption uh, to create the uh, value of the AT program. Thank you. Yes, thank you, uh, Sia, for your sharing, and I appreciate you how you highlight not just the benefits but also the challenges uh, in implementing such program. Uh, so uh, then, thank you for for that sharing. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that concludes our presentation. And in the interest of time, I would like to jump straight into our panel discussion and Q and A. Uh, thank you for those of you who have uh, participated. Uh, in, 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 in our discussion by submitting your question. Hopefully we will have time to, to address those questions. Uh, I will try my best to respond within the time provided. And so panelists, um, we all do respect, let us keep our uh, responses brief and direct so we can try to explore as many aspects as possible during our discussion. Okay, now for our panel discussion, uh, in addition to uh, our four presenters, uh, Bruce, Brian, Rob, and Najia, we are honored to also welcome Mr. Henry Ong. Uh, Chief Executive and Director of the National Institute of Accounting Technician or NIAT of the Philippines. So welcome, Henry. I'm sure you've been playing, uh, paying uh, close attention to the uh, presentation before we've heard from uh, our other panelists. So perhaps uh, we can start uh, by hearing from you, Henry, uh, starting uh, with the very first question that I have, because obviously we've heard about the um, the UK experience, the regional Singapore, Malaysia experience, Cambodia for sure. Uh, what about the Philippines experience? I mean, could you briefly share with us about the, I guess, the state of ATs in the Philippines and the role of the NIT in this space? I mean, I'm sure some of you is actually, uh, some of us are actually quite surprised to hear that NIT is actually one of the largest AT uh, organization or membership organization in the world. Can you share with uh, us on that, Henry? Henry, are you online? Just, just want to check. Hello, Oki. Okay. Yeah. 
Yes. Did you get the question, Henry? Uh, what? What? Uh, can you repeat again the question? Sure, sure. No, I'm just, I'm just asking. I mean, obviously, we've heard from all of the presenters, so obviously, we would like to uh, hear uh, your views as well. I mean, about the Philippines experience. I mean, what about what? What are the states of ATs in the Philippines? I mean, what are your role with the NIAT in this space? Uh, yes. Um, you know, uh, many years ago, when we started this, uh, 20, almost uh, 20 years ago. Uh, the the situation of the 80 was uh, never heard of because uh, because in the Philippines uh, the mindset of people of employers when they hire a bookkeeper that 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 somebody must be a, as a CPA so so that has been uh, that's always been a mindset so when you hire a bookkeeper you want somebody who can uh, help do the taxation whatever it must be a CPA so when, whenever they they put in the newspaper the requirement always be uh, this person must have uh, like a government uh, li license, but uh, that one when we started it was very very difficult because uh, no, 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 nobody knew. But uh, the the opportunity at at the time was that uh, the, 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 the the supply was just too many because uh, there were so many people that uh, were taking uh, accounting, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the the skills that the, the skills that they were focused on were more on audit, were more more on audit. And then the, uh, the 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 small and and small small and medium uh, size uh, uh, sector, the small businesses, uh, they were looking for accountants that can understand their needs because a lot of CPAs in the Philippines they are just focused on audit. They are very good in auditing, so you know so that because that's what they're they they were trained for in in the university. But uh, they don't know how to do payroll, they don't know how to do taxation because that's not taught. But that 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 is not taught thoroughly in the school. Maybe you know payroll is just taught only like maybe um, just uh, you know few, just just a few days you know but uh, in reality payroll is is a very huge you uh, know as it's, it's it's a very huge uh, uh, function also some uh, also uh, taxation also a lot of uh, accountants they don't know how to uh, register a company something like that or so so and then and then it come it it came to a point that uh, a lot of our uh, accountants are, um, are are not are 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 not very good in bookkeeping already. So they already forgot because they were so obsessed in passing the CPA board exam in the Philippines. So that 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 gave that gave us a lot of opportunity because uh, we, at the time, uh, because I saw the need and then uh, we offered the uh, the CAT program, and then um, I, unlike unlike that that what that what we, what we have discussed today, uh, you said that uh, a lot of school leavers become a, a AT and then they 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 go up. But in the Philippines, the the experience is different. Our AT, our CAT, are accounting accounting graduates. These are the bachelors of degree in accountancy who are eligible to become CPA, but they go down because they want to master their skills in bookkeeping, in payroll, in cost accounting, all of these courses, and they want to become CAT. So, so that 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 is that is our our situation. Now today, today the the situation now for accounting technicians is very different from what we had twenty years ago because today. The supply of accountants in the Philippines is very, very small. It's decreasing, uh, and now now it becomes very, very competitive. Now it's very become very competitive. So, uh, like for example, um, even even uh, we we also have like a lot of uh, BPOs from uh, other countries like Australia. They come to the Philippines and they hire a lot of accountants. So they compete with all the all the the auditing firms. So they got they get all the. Uh, uh, the CPAs also, or the B, the B, the BSA graduate, Bachelor of Science in Accountancy graduates, they 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 hire all these people. So now now the private sector they need a lot of uh, accountants, you know. So because the supply there's no supply, so now the CAT become very important in our in our industry, because because this is what we need now because because of the oversupply. Uh, you know they can hire CAT, so they are now very, very, very well recognized. So even the BPOs, when they hire, they don't need CPAs anymore. They hire the CATs. So they hire people who have studied account accounting, accounting technology. Because uh, uh, many years ago, we also we also introduced accounting technology in the uh, in the in the higher degree education. So it's only in the Philippines that we have bachelor's degree in accounting technology. So we 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 were the one who promoted them. We also promoted the bookkeeping in the technical vocational in the Philippines. So before they, they don't have this kind of uh, courses. Now, now they have this called the NC3 in the Philippines. It's offered by the technical and uh, vocational 
uh, institute in the Philippines. They have bookkeeping also um, introduced by us. Yeah, so today, now, now the opportunities are, are a lot because, um, uh, because, because of the supply and demand, there are a lot of more, there are more demands now than, than, than the supply. So even, even people who are not graduates of a bachelor's degree in accountancy, they now want to become CP, CAT. So even in the university, when they have uh, taken at least uh, six units of accounting or nine units of accounting, um, they all they all want they all uh, you know uh, they all they all have a route how to become a CAT. So it's a business course, but uh, they don't go to CPA anymore. They go to CAT. Yeah. Henry, perhaps if I if I uh, uh, build on that, just to give perspective to to our audience, how big is your membership at the moment? NIT. Uh, yeah, at the, at the moment uh, we have around forty thousand members. Yeah, so but 40, uh, but this mem yeah, 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 but this members is accumulated through 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 the years from from uh, from from the one from from the year that we started almost twenty years ago. Yeah, I see. I see. I guess. I guess. Let me let me stay with you, Henry. Uh, uh, one of the things that is uh, kept being mentioned by some of our presenters actually about the recognition of the the program of qualification itself. I mean, throughout your journey, how, do you ever consider recognition as an issue? Uh, yes. Um, uh, in the in the beginning, it was uh, very challenging because um, even in the university, because uh, they said that uh, it's our first time to hear about certified accounting technician and what is accounting technician, they don't know. So so we have to exert a lot of effort explaining uh, the work of an accounting technician like this, like this. So so it took us some some time uh, before we are able to get some re recognition. So uh, but uh, but uh, one way that uh, we did was uh, to um, to promote the uh, accounting te uh, accounting technicians to the employers and to the HR people, so like uh, we have uh, like a session with uh, you know hiring or uh, rec recruit, I mean people in charge of recruitment for accountants. So we explain to them uh, the work of a accounting technician, and and th there's such a thing, you know. So it just so happened in the Philippines, the supply, the demand for CPA become very in demand that uh, they need more accountants, even non CPA. So. So that's that's where we had the opportunity, yeah. But but the but the recognition uh, uh, later on we got a recognition because the um, commission on higher education uh, recognized our program, and uh, they came up with a bachelor's degree in accounting technology. Okay, so I I check in other countries uh, there's no such thing as an accounting technology degree, but it's only in the Philippines and they put there after you finish the degree then you can become a CAT. So I think that that recognition many years ago uh, gave us a lot of um, uh, support. Okay, so we were able to grow our membership uh, because of that. Because just imagine there are so many universities in the Philippines that offer the CAT, and I mean, I mean the accounting technology degree. You know, so and also during that time, um, a lot of uh, universities because there are so many students that want to take accounting, but not everyone are are. Are uh, are qualified to become a CPA. So early on, before even they graduate from the university, the university themselves they already advise the student to 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 switch their course. So from BSA, bachelor's account bachelor's degree in accountancy, to bachelor's degree in accounting technology. Yeah. So before they can already identify that these students cannot can cannot make it, then they go there. So so that's that's what we did. So somehow we were able to. Um, uh, bridge that uh, gap and uh, provided some hope to a lot of uh, students, and and later on because of the of the increase in population of the of the graduates, then we're also able to connect them to opportunities to work opportunities. So I think in the Philippines, um, uh, the demand for AT accounting technician is um is 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 very strong. It's very strong. Yeah. So I mean, right now the mindset has already changed, unlike before. Uh, you keep on looking for CPA today. No more today. You just you, we just need someone who is an accounting technician who can help us set up the business, do the payroll, do the tax. You, you can already get a job. Yeah, that's even that, that's why that's why a lot of um, Australian uh, BPOs they come here and they hire tens of thousands of uh, accountants. Not 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 CPA, not CPA. They they just hire accounting technicians. They just hire just to do uh, bookkeeping. Yeah, so obviously a result of a, a long journey of building this recognition and uh, with the help some of the uh, from uh, well, market-driven demand as well. So, so I guess combination of those two things actually 
what, what led to your situation right now, which I believe for many other jurisdictions is still quite a, a further away journey. I mean, for them, it's still a quite a very early journey. I mean, a lot, a lot of the jurisdictions in the region are still looking into the possibilities of introducing a, a something that, that is similar to AT or maybe an IT qualification itself. I mean, maybe perhaps I, I, can, I, can, I can go to Rob uh, next, uh, just, just uh, discussing about the whole recognition issue. I mean, Rob, I mean, just hearing what Henry has said, uh, obviously just what you've shared in your presentation as well. Do you think well, what needs to change? I mean, for ATs to be more recognized. I mean, do you think membership of an AT body important? Yeah, um, as I said in the presentation, I think it helps. I think it helps having a focus on ATs, uh, setting up a standalone body like NIAT or like AAT that just focuses on that part of the market because it is different. I mean, as well as recognition, it's about understanding. I mean, some of the questions I've been noticing, uh, they're not completely clear, the difference between an accounting technician and a, and a, a CPA or a senior level accounting. So it's it's recognizing and understanding the differences and the important part that accounting technicians have to play within the profession. Um, and that can only come from, I mean, it's great because recognition is, is changing, you know, in the last couple of years with the work that Kappa and IFAC have done, um, I think more bodies are looking at it and realizing there is an opportunity, um, but it needs, a, it, need, it needs um, a change in mindset. You know, the accounting profession needs to change its look, outlook and, and, and embrace the opportunity and the need for accounting technicians in their economies. Because as, as Henry says, that's what's needed in most economies. It's not necessarily loads of accountants. It's bookkeepers. It's people that can do the basic stuff for businesses. And that's the accounting technician role. But it has to be done well um, to boost, um, you know, the, 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 that side of the economy and that side of the profession. So in terms of what needs to happen, um, I think continue the momentum that we've built in the last couple of years um, within each country and each jurisdiction to embrace the opportunity to see what is needed within their country because every market is different um, and to do it right as in you know it's not going to happen overnight but to put those things in place that will mean there's a recognized accounting technician um, uh, profile within the country and it's not just an add-on to you know what they do um, what is done at a senior level accountancy. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, Rob. And I think um, um, let me just move a bit from 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 that, and then just actually uh, touch uh, into the other thing that uh, Henry also mentioned in in, in his uh, response. And let me go to perhaps to you, Bruce. And this is I uh, uh, will try to link this to one of the questions that we received in the chat uh, function as well. So obviously, getting the membership of a PAO uh, to agree to recognize AT is one thing. I mean. But it can be harder to convince employers to recruit ATs and students to believe there is value in choosing it as a career path. So, so um, how do you think we can create and grow the market for ATs in a country? I mean, how do we generate supply of ATs and demand for their service? I mean, Philippines obviously it's so it's, it, it's some uh, I guess it's an example of a success story uh, resulting from a very long journey that Henry and NIT has has done in the last uh, uh, okay more than a few years, but how do you think we can do that? How, how we can create and grow the market for ATs in other jurisdictions? I suppose the short, the short answer is go talk to the Philippines. Um, <laughs> but, but I suppose, but I, but, but I suppose, I mean, one, one of the, I mean, you heard there, the benefit that they had was, was that moment of it being, you know, of that decision to offer it in, in the universities, you know, to, to offer the, the accounting technology, uh, uh, you know, qualification in the in the in the universities that became a feeder. So those types of moments where you get big recognition through through government through regulators can can be significant. But in the absence of that, uh, you know, Rob Rob made the point about you know stat, the the value of standalone <clears throat> AT bodies, and it, you know it, this 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 issue can differ between countries. But if you if you don't have a standalone AT body, then then we need to ensure that the the PAO that's offering the 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 qualification. Is investing enough in in progressing that, uh, and that it's not an afterthought. That it's not as uh, and I've seen it in a lot of a lot of our members. Unfortunately, you'll have maybe one person who's designated sometimes even just part time to focus on ATs, and that's not enough. Um, it's a huge business development exercise. Um, you need to be thinking both on the supply side and the demand side. So you know, convincing young people that this is actually a credible career path, something that's going to lead to, to, to you know, it's going to improve their lives uh, and it's going to provide opportunities for them. 
and that there will be demand for employers. But then on the employer side, lots of engagement uh, to convince them. The, the, you know, and then of course it's it's engaged with these other stakeholders like government and, and other decision makers in the country, which sometimes can lead to those those sort of watershed moments like what happened in the Philippines. But one group that I really don't want to, I think we sometimes forget about that are our, can be our biggest promote, proponents is the existing accountants, the existing professional accountants in the country. Um, and a lot of the time we focus on how these individuals are, are threatened by ATs or nervous or whatever. But if we can flip that narrative and if we can get them to be our salespeople, the the, the ones who, who are recruiting ATs themselves first, and demonstrating to the market the value, uh, I think we can go a long way. And so, you know, that we can get creative with things like incentives for people who recruit them, who who, who recruit the most ATs or who get the most, you know, support the most students to to come through the system. You know, there's there's things that you can do, but but again, it takes that focus on it. But that group, I really don't want to underestimate. We need our professional accountants around the world to be the ones who is who are who are advocating for this uh, in the context in which they work. Um, and that requires them to have a sense of ownership. It means that in that, in that point where you're getting recognition from the members of the PAO about about an AT designation, that it's not just that they like, oh, I suppose we have to do this, but rather that they're saying, yes, let's do this. And I want to be a part of making this a success because it's going to be good for my business. It's going to be good for the market. It's going to be good for the country uh, and, and, you know, and getting that sense of ownership going. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for highlighting that, Bruce. Uh, well, Everyone, I am aware of the time, but so so let me jump to you, Brian. I, we do have a question here that I would like to somehow uh, link with uh, something that I have. Uh, I've been wanting to ask you as well. Um, and you mentioned this in your presentation, actually. It's about the whole 80s. I don't want to put versus, but 80s uh, against the professional accountants qualification, the CA, CPA, CMAs. I mean, your presentation highlights the key differentiation between ATs and professional accountants. I mean, do you think it is necessary to have a clear differentiation between the two? Or would they, would would we, the profession, be better off with less differentiation, more of an association or alignment? And let me try to link this with one of the questions that we had in our chat function. I mean, would the AT qualification be seen as inferior compared to the more, I guess, uh, 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 the existing professional accountants uh, qualifications such as the CNCPS. I mean, how can we effectively change our stakeholders' mindset to accept ATs as part of the larger business ecosystem, Brian? Uh, good question, Oki. Um, I'll try and deal with each of them actually very quickly. Um, I do think differentiation is very important. And the work we've been doing over the years uh, a barrier in some jurisdictions to introducing an AT program is almost a fear from professional accountants that it will in, in some way dilute the standing of the professional accountants. And, uh, you know, one can view that almost as the price points might be different and uh, it could reduce, um, you know, the fees for services that which they get. So there is a lot to be done in persuading uh, professional accountants uh, to accept that, in fact, a professionalized co cohort of accounting technicians can actually be very beneficial for them, um, as I think Bruce pointed out in his, his presentation. But it, it will require that clear differentiation so that uh, it's understood by, by the professional accountants, but also generally by the market, that um these are these are individuals educated trained to different levels and uh, arguably would have different types of skill sets uh, all of them individually very valuable skill sets but different um so i think that has, we have to overcome any potential fear that's there and i think it's a doing a service as well to the to the market so they have a full understanding of what they're buying when they uh, get either a professional accountant or an accounting technician. Um, I think you used the word alignment as well, though, aiming towards that. And, 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 and I think that falls into place if you do what I'm saying, because it creates the, uh, the situation whereby the professional accountants and the accounting technicians can work together very efficiently uh, to deliver effective outcomes. Um, so yes, differentiation, but also yes, alignment. Um, the comment about is it inferior? Um, uh, that's come up a lot in conversation as well. 
Um, and I think it's interesting maybe how it comes up. If, for example, you set out to do a, uh, a, a, a chartered accounting program, and let's say you start, set out to do a difficult chartered accounting program and you fail to actually pass that examination, then it's very easy for people to think of you as a failed accountant. And if you then start to take on the accounting technician and pass, you've still got that tag of being a failed accountant. I think we have to switch the whole thing on its head. And what we have to do is make it very clear to students as well as to what an accounting technician program looks like, what a chartered accounting technician program looks like, so that they can take a very well-informed decision as to where they start. So if you actually get the students starting in the first place at the accounting technician level, because they think that is most suitable to them, then they immediately pass something. They immediately get a qualification. Um, so they've succeeded. And in the eyes of many and employers, they're seen as a su success. They can then go on to do a pathway into a professional accounting program anyway. And if they manage to pass that, all well and good. But I think that changes the whole uh, mindset and the whole uh, mm. vision which is created uh, that you're actually you've succeeded towards something rather than you failed away from something. So that would be my response, Orki. Yeah, that's a very, I guess that's a very uh, valid point, Brian. I think that's something that we can continue to communicate to our stakeholders, uh, to, to everyone in this audience as well, and how important to have that change of, well, change of mindset too, so we can, uh, I guess, better accept this, this whole concept of APs. Okay, so... Um, I'm, I'm very aware of the time. We uh, do apologize that we go slightly over the time. So Ed, for our audience, uh, uh, our uh, partners in the audience as well, if you have any other questions, we'll be happy to accept them to our social media platforms or, or uh, emails after this. We'll be happy to, to, to answer those questions or perhaps uh, uh, direct to, to any, uh, any of one of our partners who we believe can give you uh, uh, answers to those questions after this uh, webinar. But let me just sort of wrap up this discussion with one final question. Uh, and I would like to get a brief uh, response from each one of our panelists, so maybe starting from Bruce, Rob, uh, Chia, Henry, and finally Brian, just exactly as the order on my screen, is that I know that there's a lot of, the, uh, of our um, PAO's friends is in the audience as well. So if you can give them, I guess, the one most important call to action for the PAO, so perhaps even anyone thinking about getting into the whole AT program qualification, what would that be? So maybe we start with Bruce, Rob, Chia, um, Henry, and finally, Brian. Yeah, uh, I mean, okay, I think, I, I guess in a, in a valued, uh, value and opportunity document, we, we give some specific calls to action, but, but uh, really the main one would be, you know, do something now. Um, and make sure you know, get get everyone on board from the beginning. So so do the hard work to to convince uh, all your members to convince other stakeholders that this is the right direction of travel, and then bring them along for the journey. Um, but don't don't wait too long. There's a lot of obstacles in the way. Um, those obstacles can be overcome, but but it's a, it's a long journey. Invest the, invest sufficient resources into it uh, to give you the greatest chance of success. Excellent, Bruce. Rob, I think um, I think talk talk to us as in talk to the experts, not just AAT, but talk to or or Henry or Brian. Brian it, it convenes a group of accounting technician bodies, so talk to people that have done it or are doing it to learn from them. Because I think the main point is, it's not easy, it's not straightforward, as our experiences have shown, and it has to be relevant to the market. But talk to people who are already doing it to learn from them and see what is relevant for that country. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, me. Uh, so, yeah, oh. I think uh, to promote the uh, accounting technician, I think what's important is uh, we need to define uh, what what the market needs, and we just focus on that. So I think that's that's one way to effectively uh, market. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, recognize accounting technician work. So if we want to pro focus on bookkeeping. Uh, let's say doing uh, helping the small business uh, set up the accounting system, for example, and then doing payroll, you know, so enabling them to have like an accounting 
uh, system, you know, for, for every business. And that's the work of an accounting technician. So maybe we can just focus on these specific functions. And this is the work of an accounting technician. I think that I think that's that's the way to to differentiate what an accounting technician does as compared to a like a full full blown you know a professional accountant you know so so I mean I mean we are not here to uh, compete with uh, CPA but uh, we are here to fill fill a, a a need you know so 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 there's a gap in the market and you know this is what 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 we want to do because these are these are things that uh, CPAs don't do anymore. You know, so so I think if we can define that niche market, then that's the best way to promote the accounting technician. Yeah. Thank you, Henry. Brian, would you like to go next? And Chia, you'll take the final word. Um, thanks indeed, Oki. I mean, I, I, certainly within our publications, and I'll direct the audience back mm -hmm. to them again. Um, I think a link was put in by my colleague in the chat there. Um, there's a lot of information, which uh, hard, hard to get through in a short a virtual webinar like this, Orkin. Uh, but yes, we identified a lot of stakeholders that could have a role um, in promoting uh, the, the, the recognition of accounting technicians. Uh, to those on the call that themselves are involved in and leaders of professional accounting organizations in any way, then my call to them would be to make sure they try to understand the topic. Uh, and to go deep in understanding the topic and then hence the opportunities that are there because there are also significant opportunities for the professional accounting organisations um, themselves. Uh, and I would ask them not to sort of di dismiss the idea of accounting technicians. Um, I've heard it said from some that, you know, they don't use the word, therefore they don't exist. Uh, the one thing that's very clear is they exist in every jurisdiction. Um, they're out there doing the type of work we've been talking about. And uh, what we're looking at here is how you really professionalize that cohort and give them even greater opportunities. I'll leave it at that, Orki. I agree. Thank you, Brian. Final word, Chair. Yep. Thank you. Um, oh, for, for me, I think um, there are many obstacles. Based on my, my experience, there are many obstacles. But uh, I, I try, first I try to learn the key success and those kind of uh, obstacles from the other countries. And we commit to run while we are studying again and again with the uh, foreign, uh, other foreign country. Yeah, example, joining webinar today to share with you and to make another collaboration. But the first step, we must, we must do it first otherwise we still think about many many obstacles will come again and again so uh, what what we decide is to walk must walking yeah first step is uh, when you use you start first step and then you will see another step easily when you don't start it and then still listen to the other is still you know it's not a positively uh, comment or thing again and again because of there are many uh, uh, different ideas. And uh, the delay of the running a program is because of the many ideas and uh, the support. So we try all the best because of the, of the technology right now. Example for me, the platform we develop ourselves. Uh, uh, but uh, the program uh, have also the technical support. We try to find the fund supported from the other, like UNDP or ICW or other ACCA. Yeah, and come up right now, we try to uh, uh, recognize, to be recognized with the national level, with the CPA level, and international level with the, any accountancy body, uh, what we will uh, do for the next step. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, there's no such thing as waiting for the perfect start. So I think uh, that's an excellent way to wrap up our discussion this afternoon. Uh, unfortunately, of course, that is the end of our sharing session today. But as what um, President Boravit has uh, mentioned in his address, today's webinar hopefully will encourage further discussion on APs in the ASEAN jurisdiction. So together with our um, member organizations, partners, we look forward to building on our discussion today and to provide you with the latest updates on APs and other relevant topics for the profession. 
So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before we close, I would like to, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I would like to invite you to share your thoughts about our webinar uh, today. So, kindly refer to the link and QR code presented on your screen right now. So, your feedback would be very much appreciated. And, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of AFA, I would like to thank once again our partners, uh, Kapuchia Institute of Certified Public Accountants and Auditors, KICPA. The Association of Accounting Technicians (AAT) and the Confederation of Asian and Pacific Accountants (CAPA) for organizing today's webinar. Of course, our presenters and panelists for their excellent sharing and discussion. Um, the Institute of Indonesia Chartered Accountants, as our AFA Permanent Secretariat, for the full support in the hosting of today's webinars. Last but not least, our audience for attending and participating in our discussion. I hope that you find the sharing and discussion informative and, of course, useful. Uh, please don't forget to follow our social media accounts uh, on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook for more information about our events, activities, and the latest information about uh, 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 all the latest developments relevant to the Asian accountancy profession. Uh, my name is Aoki Pratama. I look forward to welcoming you to our next event. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, presenters. Thank you, panelists.
Thank you everyone for your participation. Please make sure that you uh, get a photo of the uh, QR code or the link for the post event survey and please kindly complete the post event survey to collect the um, pres presentation slides from our webinar today. Please kindly do so now because we're going to close this webinar room in one minute. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. We're going to close the room in five, four, three, two, one.